Okay. Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. This is our first Saturday together in 2019. And we are God's Church of Love online. What I'm describing to you is how the devil works against God's people. And I want you to know that there is something set aside for us that is it doesn't make us better than anyone else but it's set aside for us because of our heart condition where our hearts are with god let me get into the word isaiah chapter 7 starting at verse 1 and it came to pass in the days of ahaz the son of jotham the son of uzziah king of judah that Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remalia, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. Remember that. To war against it, but could not prevail against it. And it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim and his heart was moved and the heart of his people as the trees of, of the wood are moved with the wind. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, go forth now to meet Ahaz thou and Sheazerbub thy son at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fullest field and say unto him, take heed and be quiet. Now, if I were to switch that around and take it back to the beginning of the Old Testament where Moses was speaking to the children of Israel as the enemy was in hot pursuit of them, I would change that to be still and see the salvation of the Lord. But I'm going to read the way they put it. And that's just so you get a real feeling of what he was saying to them. And say unto him, Take heed, and be quiet, fear not, neither be faint-hearted for the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of resin with Syria and of the son of Remelia. Now, this is my interpretation of that. Basically, what he's saying is, be still and see the salvation of God. Don't be afraid. Don't be faint-hearted. Don't get all intimidated because the dragon is wagging his two tails because of the smoke coming out of the dragon's nostrils and the fire and the anger. All right, don't be all intimidated by all that drama. Don't be intimidated by the threat. The threat is basically a smoke screen to scare you. Now, verse five. Because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Amalia have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tobiel. Thus saith the Lord God, and this is your word for, I believe, the next three years. It's for life. But the next three years, I believe something really, really good, something rich is going to happen in our lives. Now, thus saith the Lord God, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. This is me now. When you feel like the enemy is coming at you, when you feel like there is an onslaught, you have to remember, y'all, it shall not stand. You have to remember that God is not shaken in his boots like David and his people were. God is not wondering, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Oh, no, no, no. God's got this thing under total control. And you have to know that God, he has a divine protection over you. 
Now, God is your umbrella. God is your sanctuary. God is your shelter. God is your refuge, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Hello? All right. So remember who God is when the enemy is coming at you. And also remember this, not only who you are, a child of the Most High King, but whose you are. Remember that. Now, we're going to move on, and I'm going to read Isaiah chapter 60. Like I said, this is a lot of word today. So I hope y'all are real hungry because you're going to get some real good food. And I ain't talking about my mouth. I'm talking about God's word. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Now, I speak this to every one of us as a blessing over the next three years. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness over the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Mm, do you hear that? It's going to be obvious that the glory of God is on you. It's going to be obvious. Uh, for example, I was walking down the hallway of the hospital last Wednesday when I was on chaplain duty. And there was a family standing out in the hallway waiting for the hospital staff to finish working on their grandmother. And as they were standing out in the hallway, I passed them one way and then came back, coming back the other way. And I was getting ready to ask them if they'd like to have prayer out in the hall for their grandmother while we were waiting to pray for her directly. And as I was getting ready to ask the question, one of the guys said, let me ask you a question. Um, are, are you a, a, a born again Christian? Are you a, a, in Christ? And I said, yes. He said, I knew it, I knew it. I told my mother, didn't I tell you mom? There's something about her. There's something on her. Now. You guys will start hearing that more and more and more because God has a way of shining brighter the darker things get. And things are going to get darker, you guys. Don't get befuddled about it. Don't get dumbfounded. Don't get intimidated by the way things are spiraling out of control into darkness as the old rock and roll song used to sing, slip being into darkness. That's what the world is doing. It's sliding in for a home run into darkness. And we cannot allow ourselves to be intimidated. So I say to you, fear not, neither be faint hearted by all the threats of sin, by all the threats of darkness, by all of the, the, the sinful uh, devices that are coming through the internet, the, the, uh, the, the cell phones, the, 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 the vaccines, the, 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 oh my goodness, the media, all the things that are shoving sin down your throats, that are shoving confusion, the spirit of confusion is running rampant right now. That's why. That's what's ahead of, it's not a spirit of homosexuality. It's a spirit of confusion. Anytime a spirit comes in and tries to make children not even know if they want to be a boy or a girl, that's a spirit of confusion working hand in hand with the spirit of homosexuality, of sexual promiscuity unclean spirits, all that's working together. But right now you are to focus in on who God is and who you are in him and the fact that you belong to him. That places you under the ark of safety. Okay. Oh, help me, Lord. Help me through this. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. 
and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Basically, I know a lot of this deals with the Lord Jesus, but this is the effect that we will start to have in the dark as the age grows darker. There will be people that will come to you because they won't know how to get to God. They won't even know it's possible for them to just talk to God directly. And you have to not get the big head. Don't sit there thinking of yourself as a guide to the blind. And No, 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 no. You remember, you're just a traffic cop. You're a conduit. You're a go-between. You're a liaison. Get direct every single soul that's drawn to you. Direct them to God not you. You're not winning a fan club here. Direct them to God. Remember what part, what role you play in these last days. And do not start thinking it's you because it's not. Wow. 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 Now, this is for those of you who go through those dry spells. For those of you who Always question your walk with the Lord, your connection with God, your relationship with God, God's pleasure with you. You wonder where you are because you go through these dry spells and 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 you think that something's really, really wrong with you. Well, yeah, it is because you were born in sin and shape and iniquity. Something's wrong with me. Something's wrong with each and every one of us. A whole lot is wrong with us. But Jesus Christ. He makes the difference, right? So don't trip off of what's wrong with you. Be encouraged by what's right with Jesus Christ because it's in him that we move, live, have our being. It's in him that we're called righteous. It's in him that we're in the the ark of safety. All right, now listen. This is for those of you who suffer and and struggle with discouragement because of you, because of everything that's wrong with you. (laughs) Yeah, join the human race, y'all. This is um, Isaiah chapter 35, starting at verse one. And listen to the illustrations. The wilderness, dry, dead places. All right. The wilderness and the solitary place, mm, that's a place of loneliness, isn't it? All right, now, let's get back. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble needs. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert, and the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons, where each lay, shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And an highway shall be there, 
and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Woo! The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring man, though fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, no, not, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Ooh, we have no idea what God is going to do for us. Ho, 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 ho. I am trying to maintain my cool because I feel I felt this way last night when the Lord gave me these scriptures. It's like it's like God is saying help me Lord. It's like God is saying I'm picturing. Let me picture this for you. You're in a house. It looks like all around you, the house is burning down. The curtains are all ablaze. The fire's crawling up the wall. Some of it's going over the ceiling. The electrical circuitry is sparking. And now we're getting with electrical fires and all kind of stuff is breaking loose. I mean, fire just everywhere. And while everybody else in the house is running in fear and they're panicking and they're terrified, there's a certain part of that fire that glows even brighter, wider, seemingly hotter. But that's the way that God says for you to walk. And you walk through that fire, praying every step of the way that it doesn't burn you because you're fighting your natural fear of fire. But you're also walking by faith. And you walk through that fire. And as you walk through the fire, the joy floods your soul while everybody else is running around trying to find a way out. God has opened your eyes and you see the way. And you're walking out and you're trying to call everybody to follow you. But anyway, you walk through the fire and you're full of joy and you're full of thankfulness and gratefulness and you're worshiping God every step of the way because you don't feel any heat. There's no damage happening to your skin. It's a holy fire from God that has created a way of escape for you. And it blesses you to come out on the other side in a very safe area. And there's no damage to your clothes, no damage to your hair, to your skin. You're totally intact. And your soul, you're so full. You're so overwhelmed with grateful thanksgiving and joy. And you feel the presence of God all over you. And you're trying to use your voice to call other people to come through the way of escape God has shown you. But some of them will perish because they're not listening to you. They're panicking. They don't even have an ear to hear. That's the way this world is going to be in this dark time. God will always have a way of escape. Always a way of escape. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. I feel like this is such a beautiful message for God's people who stay dwelling in the secret place of the Most High and abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. We really, really have to stay close to God. We have to. That doesn't mean we're blah, 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 blah. You don't have to talk his ear off all the time. Just be in his presence. Listen to him. Read his word. Thank him. Thank him for everything he's doing in your life. Have a conversation with him. 
talk to him about what happened yesterday and how that tripped you out and you thought that was funny and 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 and, and Lord, were you laughing at me when I did so and so? Talk, chat with him, fellowship with him, just like you do with you know with each other on the phone. That there's a, a a communing that we need to do more of. I need to do more. All of us do, and we need to draw closer because. There, there are going to be times when there's so much chaos and so much noise. We have to be so in tune that while everybody else is deaf and blind and, and, and they can't find their way out, God will always show us the way. Always. Always show us the way. And we have to be willing to leave everything behind. What if something is coming? What if something is about to happen and God tells you and your husband or tells you and your wife or tells you and confirms it by a relative or somebody in your church fellowship, tells you to get up, pack your clothes, or take nothing with you but your money, your ID, and your keys and go to this place. And when you go to this place, it will be told you what to do. And when you get there, you find out that there are other people of God that heard the same message. And they're all waiting around together with you, waiting on God's next instruction. Are you willing to do that? You willing to walk away from your job? Are you willing to walk away from your house? Are you willing to walk away from all those pretty clothes you just bought two years ago? Are you willing? to walk away from all of your family ties. Now, I'm not talking about leaving your kids. Of course, you're gonna take your kids with you. But I'm talking some of you are not married. You're like me. You don't have kids. You don't have, you know, you're single. And, and, and all you have is maybe some relatives and some church friends or some neighbors. You're willing to leave that behind to follow God, not knowing if you'll ever see them again like Abraham willing to do that but what if God says go to this place and go to that place and wait there three days and it will be told you what to do and you're there and all of a sudden by some miracle everybody's got something to eat everybody's got, got something to keep them warm they've got a shelter over their head may not be pretty but it's safe but God is speaking to people and they're ministering to each other and they're basking in God's presence while they're waiting on him for the next move. You never know what crazy thing God may tell you to do. Somebody may walk in that door and say, I have a mansion and so-and-so. God told me to tell all of you to come and stay with me. He will keep our place safe. We have to be so in tune with God that when he's ready to make a way of escape for us, we will be together in his presence, safe, totally provided for, not hungry, not cold, not hot, but comfortably provided for. Are you willing or will you be like Lot's wife, longing for what you're leaving behind you? We have to be ready for whatever God may tell us to do in these last days. And I ask you, will you be ready? Will you? You ever play basketball? All right. Now, this is an attitude that I believe we should all have when we follow God, especially in these dark days coming, because they're going to be darker and darker and scarier. But we will be safe. Now listen, play basketball, right? Bouncing the ball and you're getting ready to try to get a good shot at the basket, right? And you got one foot on that ground that you cannot lift while you're dribbling. One foot's got to stay stationary. Now you can pivot on that. That's your pivot foot. The other foot turns you around like a steering wheel. You may turn this way, you may turn that way, but the bottom line is that one foot's got to stay in place or else you're traveling. So here you are, that's what the umpire will call you traveling or whatever you call them now. 
But anyway, so here you are. You're, you're hitting, getting ready to, to aim up on the basketball. And then somebody's coming to interfere. So now you got to duck that. You got to bounce the ball. You got to spin around on your pivot foot. And you got to get another shot and you shoot it. Well, that pivot foot is what's going to save your behind in these dark days. In these dark days, you may be heading one way. And God may say, now, I told you to come this way. But right now, right at this very second, I want you to turn left. You got to be ready to just do it. Just do it. Don't stand there walking 10 more feet, debating with the Lord. Well, why I got to go left? This is a safer looking block. That looks scary over. If God tells you to turn left, baby, it's safe. And you turn left on that pivot foot. In other words, you be ready to change direction at any given moment. Flexibility is what you're going to need in these dark days. And a spirit of blind obedience. Will you have it? Or will you be another Lot's wife, male or female? But there is a scripture that talks about how God will make a way for his people the same way he did when he parted the Red Sea and his people crossed over on dry land. There's coming a point where he said the almost like the rivers will lay low, the waters will lay low and God will make ways and passages and areas that we normally would not be able to walk in order to get to safety. So don't be surprised if the weather does real weird things. Because when the weather does weird things, that will be God's hand creating passageways for us to go back and forth from safety to safety. We have to be very keenly open in our ears. Those of us who may have been dull of hearing before need to sharpen our hearing by the Spirit of God so that we're not deaf, but we can hear when God speaks. We need to have God open our eyes so we're not blinded or distracted, but we can see when God throws up a road sign. When God puts up a traffic cop that says, turn right, turn left, stop. We need to be aware of his direction, of his instruction, because God will guide us to safety every step of the way. If you have a heart to obey, if you have an ear to hear, an eye to see, a heart to understand. All right, all I want to say to you, I don't want to drag this on because this I could tell could be a three hour sermon. I could tell it. I want you to be mindful of what God has in store for you. It's time now to start asking God questions, bombard him with questions. Tell him you need to know what to do now to prepare for then. If it, are there classes you need to take? Are there skills you need to learn? You may need to go to Home Depot and learn basic electricity. You may need to go to Lowe's and learn basic tiling or construction, laying, laying walls. You need to learn some things. You don't know what we may have to know then. So now is the time to ask God. Ask God how to cook in the middle of open mother nature. What type of devices are out there that will heat up food without fire? That will heat up your water without coals and 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 uh and and fuel. You need to know how to you need to ask God to teach you what you need to know. And if you don't need to know it, don't go out trying to learn it all. Don't waste your time doing that. Only do what God says for you to do. And if he tells you you don't need to worry about all that, I've got you covered, then guess what? It depends on where you are and where he's going to take you. 
then settle it in your heart that you're ready because God's ready for you and leave it at that. Don't rattle your brain trying to get it together. No, it's not a time to panic, not a time to fear, not a time to be faint hearted because whatever the devil is out there planning, it's not going to prevail against you. He already said it in his word. So you got that. You can take that to the bank. But the other thing is you've got to stay open to God's signal. You've got to keep yourself in line. You have to, you know, be able to pick up his signal. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? You know, you got to pick up his signal in order to know when God is ready to speak. If you're doing the dishes and God says, turn the water off. Come here. I want to talk to you. Stop doing the dishes. Go sit down. If you're at work and you're doing a job and God says, get in your truck. I want to say something to you and I want your your complete undivided attention, then you go back and finish your job. You stop what you're doing and go hear what God has to say. Get pen and paper in hand so you can take notes. I'm telling you, God will start preparing, equipping, and getting us ready. He will start directing us and aiming us in the right direction so you can go through the fiery house and not get burned. You may have to go through a pack of wolves to get to safety and God will close those wolves mouths. They can't touch you. They'll look at you like, oh, what's that? That's kind of a weird thing, isn't it, Charlie? Yeah, did you see that, Bob? Yeah, look at that Billy Ball. That's a weird creature right there. What is that? Hmm. Oh well. Let's go back to finding us something to eat. God will not allow nature to come against you when you're in the ark of safety. Mm. No weapon formed against you will prosper, baby. And you take that to the bank. In these dark days, you are living in the bright light of God. God's light has risen upon you. Mm. Wow. God bless you as you live in his light. God bless you as you hear his voice. God bless you as your heart stays on that basketball pivot foot so you can obey him at every given moment. Leaving all behind if need be to follow him to safety. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. In these next three years. Amen. <laughs>